The question is that this bill be now read a second time, and I call the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise to speak on the Infrastructure Australia Act Amendment Bill, Cost Benefit Analysis 2014. This is an important bill which will provide clarity about the role of Infrastructure Australia and ensure that cost benefit analyses are entrenched under the Infrastructure Australia Act. It will implement the government's promise made at the 2013 election that Infrastructure Australia will assess projects with a capital expenditure amount of $100 million or more. In the time available to me today, I'd like to make three points. Firstly, that the policies of the previous government, the Rudd Gillard Rudd government, in relation to Infrastructure Australia involved some sensible aspirations, aspirations that sadly were not reflected in reality. I secondly want to argue that the saga of the National Broadband Network is a good example of why it's so important to have a cost-benefit analysis before a major infrastructure project. Thirdly, I want to highlight that the measures in this bill will entrench the role of cost-benefit analyses in the process overseen by Infrastructure Australia. So if I turn to the first point, the previous government stated some high-minded aspirations in relation to Infrastructure Australia and the, the way that it would work. Uh, Infrastructure Australia was announced by Kevin Rudd in 2008, and at the time it was said that this new statutory body was to have three key objectives. To conduct audits on all aspects of nationally significant infrastructure, in particular water, transport, communications and energy to draw up an infrastructure priority list involving billions of dollars of planned projects and to ad advise government, investors and infrastructure developers on regulatory re reform aimed at speeding up projects. Now, A key principle articulated by Infrastructure Australia in all of its materials was the importance of cost-benefit analysis. And indeed, that principle was reflected in some of the things that were said more broadly by the Rudd Gillard Rudd government. In the 2008 9 budget, the Rudd Gillard Rudd government, I think from memory at, this, at that stage it was only the Rudd government, it was only later to achieve its full magnificence, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as the Rudd Gillard Rudd government. But in the 2008 9 budget, the then government stated that efficient public sector infrastructure investment required quotes, a commitment to transparency at all stages of the decision-making process. Close quotes. Sadly, that high-minded aspiration was not lived up to, and within uh, the following year, the then government failed to release the cost-benefit analysis of the 15 projects with a total investment value of $80 billion that were selected for partial government funding in the 2009-10 budget. Six of these projects, in fact, were not on the priority list established by Infrastructure Australia. Uh, and even more troublingly, Mr Deputy Speaker, Labor decided that it would build a national broadband network, uh, a network that we now know, based upon analysis conducted by NBN Co and released publicly uh, just before Christmas last year, we now know that the culmination of Labor's plans would have involved an expenditure of well over $70 billion, but there was no cost-benefit analysis. And yet, and yet, Infrastructure Australia issued guidelines which articulated its stated principle of the primacy of cost-benefit anal analysis. Uh, Infrastructure Australia said, quotes, it will only give advice to governments often in relation to hundreds of millions of dollars of public funds on the basis of a comprehensive and robust evidence base." Close quotes. At the same time, throughout the uh, time of the previous government, there was in place uh, the provisions of the Best Practice Regulation Handbook, which said that the Australian government quotes, is committed to the use of cost-benefit analysis to assess regulatory proposals to encourage better decision-making. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, cost-benefit analysis is important for a host of reasons. We know, sadly, that there are always more calls on government funding 
than government is able to meet. And so, therefore, there is a need to prioritise projects, to prioritise the projects which government is considering fun funding, and clearly a rational basis on which to prioritise funding is to have regard to a formal analysis of the likely benefit to be delivered by the project and weigh that up against the likely cost of the project. And this is summarised, of course, in the notion of the benefit-cost ratio. And of course, it is very important to measure the costs and benefits of different policy options, including, of course, the indirect costs or benefits, such as gains accruing to the community rather than to individuals, that's to say public gains rather than private gains, on a common basis so that these costs and benefits can be fairly compared. Unfortunately, the previous Labor government, the Rudd Gillard Rudd government, failed to live up to its bold claims and stated aspirations in, re in relation to both Infrastructure Australia and the cost-benefit analysis uh, as a principle. So, despite uh, the bold rhetoric, the profligate spending of the previous government meant that it was soon the case that Infrastructure Australia was not in a position to make recommendations which were supported by funding commitments. And there's a very stark contrast with the clear commitment that the Abbott government has made in relation to infrastructure. As part of the 2014-15 budget, there was laid out a historic $50 billion infrastructure investment program designed to deliver vital transport infrastructure right across our cities, regional centres and rural communities. So, first of all, Infrastructure Australia failed to live up to aspirations because it became increasingly irrelevant as it became obvious that the federal government had spent all of its money and more. Uh, but secondly, it failed to live up to the stated aspiration of using a cost-benefit analysis as a key requirement before any major project. And let me turn to the National Broadband Network as a case study of why it's so important to have a cost-benefit analysis and why, sadly, the previous government failed to live up to that principle. In 2009, the then Prime Minister, Mr Rudd, announced that the government was going to invest up to $43 billion, together with the private sector, over eight years in a superfast national broadband network, which he described as, quotes, the single biggest infrastructure decision in Australia's history, close quotes. Some 15 minutes after the press conference, Mr Rudd updated his Twitter account just announced biggest ever investment in Australian broadband. Really exciting infrastructure for the future, Mr Rudd said. No mention of cost-benefit analysis in that tweet. Uh, then Communications Minister Conroy said the decision was a historic moment for Australia's telecommunications sector. But with this announcement and with the very big commitment of spending, there was no cost-benefit analysis despite the stated policy of the then Labor government that there would be a cost-benefit analysis conducted through the Infrastructure Australia process before major infrastructure commitments. Indeed, then Broadband and Communications Minister Conroy repeatedly dismissed calls for a cost-benefit analysis. In May 2009, he had this to say, quotes, we don't need any more studies, any more cost-benefit analysis to know this is an infrastructure investment Australia is calling out for." Close quote. Well, when in opposition, the coalition sought to help. We sought to assist. We proposed legislation designed to remind the, government, the then government of its commitments and designed to require the Productivity Commission to conduct and publish a cost-benefit analysis of the national broadband network. Sadly, sadly, that legislation was not supported by the then government. And as late as 2013, as late as 2013, the then Prime Minister, back for a second time, Mr Rudd, was still boasting about the national broadband network and glossing over the lack of a cost-benefit analysis. In his speech to the Urban Development Institute of Australia Congress in 2013, he said the government has undertaken the single biggest capital investment program in the, in the country's history, in the NBN, to turbocharge productivity growth, growth for the future by, by providing business with new technology platforms. Well, Mr. D Mr. Or Madam Deputy Speaker, when the coalition came to government, we acted consistent with our policy commitment to rectify this yawning gap, and we established a process to carry out a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, in, before we did that, 
Mr Bill Scales, AO, a very eminent uh, public servant and uh, uh, significant contributor to public policy in Australia over many decades, was commissioned to conduct an independent audit of NBN policy process, and he had this to say, quotes, there was no business case or any cost-benefit analysis or independent studies of the policy undertaken, with no clear operating instructions provided to this completely new government business enterprise within a legislative and regulatory framework still undefined and without any consultation with the wider community." Close quotes. About as damning a summary of a chaotically mismanaged public policy process as you could imagine. Well, we've sought to uh, correct this yawning gap, and last month the government released the independent cost-benefit analysis of the National Broadband Network, a piece of work done by an eminent committee uh, chaired by Dr Vertigan, uh, a again eminent uh, former public servant. And th that piece of work assessed the costs and benefits of deploying broadband through a range of models. It confirmed that there are economic and social advantages in deploying high-speed broadband infrastructure. Indeed, it found that nationwide access to superfast broadband will deliver total benefits to Australia worth more than $40 billion in today's dollars. But very importantly, it considered the preferences and potential future demand for high-speed broadband in Australia, and it estimated consumer willingness to pay for increased broadband speeds, an absolutely critical part of the analysis and something that the previous government never bothered to do. What the report found was that consumers do not need and are not willing to pay for speeds greater than those that will be available under the Abbott government's commitment of 50 megabits per second by the end of 2019 uh, to 90 per cent of the fixed line footprint. The cost-benefit analysis that was uh, conducted uh, under the auspices of the current government uh, also concluded that the present government's approach to deploying the national broadband network through an optimised multi-technology mix model, as recommended in the strategic review conducted by NBNCO, will provide net benefits of $18 billion compared to a baseline in which there is no further rollout of superfast broadband. And indeed, one of the particular merits, one of the particular merits of the cost-benefit analysis that was conducted by the Vertican panel was to systematically assess the various paths forward from the starting point and say what are the options, what are the costs of each of those paths and what are the benefits that will be captured if we choose one or other of these, of these paths. And I'm pleased to say that it found that the multi-technology mix model, which is the one that the current government is now pursuing in relation to the national broadband network, is one that will offer $16 billion more in net benefits than the fibre to the premises plan that the previous Labor government was following. Indeed, the cost-benefit analysis found that the previous Labor government's plan would have had net benefits of only about $2 billion. And there's a very clear reason for this, that the multi-technology mix model will deliver broadband to most Australian households considerably more quickly than the plan which the previous government was following, and people get yeah, yeah. benefit from getting the broadband network delivered more quickly. So a thorough and rigorous analysis looking at the costs, looking at the benefits, a very important approach and one that is delivering tangible public policy benefits. Well, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the third point I want to make in the brief time available is that the bill before the House will entrench the requirement to carry out a cost-benefit analysis and, as the experience with the National Broadband Network shows, this is a very desirable thing and the lack of such a step being taken by the previous government uh, has been highly regrettable, Madam Deputy Speaker, highly regrettable in that it has uh, led to delays and it's led to a path being followed which was not the optimal path, a path which needed to be corrected by the present government. And I'm pleased to say we are getting on with correcting it. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's uncontentious that investing in infrastructure is of the highest importance 
but there are finite funds available to government, and so to allocate those funds rationally, it's very important to engage in cost-benefit analysis. That is what this bill will ensure happens. I thank the parliamentary secretary. The question is.